सी आई टी एन सी ई आर टी प्रेजेंट्स ऑडियो बुक ऑफ हिस्ट्री फॉर क्लास सेवेंथ इन टाइटल्ड आर पास टू दिस इज चैप्टर नंबर सेवन ट्राइब्स नो मैट्स एंड सेटल्ड कम्युनिटीज फ्रॉम पेज नंबर नाइंटी वन टू पेज नंबर वन हंड्रेड थ्री लेट्स लिसन टू द चैप्टर सेवन ट्राइब्स नो मैड्स एंड सेटल्ड कम्युनिटीज पेज नाइंटी वन यू सो इन चैप्टर टू थ्री एंड फोर हाउ किंगडम्स रोज इन फेल इवन एज दिस वॉज हैपनिंग न्यू आर्ट्स क्राफ्ट्स एंड प्रोडक्शन एक्टिविटीज फ्लरिश्ड इन टाउन्स एंड विलेजेस ओवर द सेंचुरीज इंपॉर्टेंट पोलिटिकल सोशल एंड इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट्स हैड टेकन प्लेस but social change was not the same everywhere because different kinds of societies evolved differently it is important to understand how and why this happened in large parts of the subcontinent society was already divided according to the rules of varn these rules as prescribed by the brahmans were accepted by the rulers of large kingdoms the difference between the high and low and between the rich and poor increased under the delhi sultans and the moguls this hierarchy between social classes grew further on the right hand side of this page a picture is shown this is figure 1 it shows tribal dance santal painted scroll beyond big cities tribal societies there were however other kinds of societies as well many societies in the subcontinent did not follow the social rules and rituals prescribed by the brahmans nor were they divided into numerous unequal classes such societies are often called tribes page 92 members of each tribe were united by kinship bonds many tribes obtained their livelihood from agriculture others were hunter gatherers or herders most often they combined these activities to make full use of the natural resources of the area in which they lived some tribes were nomadic and moved from one place to another a tribal group controlled land and pastures jointly and divided these amongst households according to its own rules many large tribes thrived in different parts of the subcontinent they usually lived in forests hills deserts and places difficult to reach sometimes they clashed with more powerful caste based societies in various ways the tribes retained their freedom and preserved their separate culture but the caste based and tribal societies also depended on each other for their diverse needs this relationship of conflict and dependence gradually caused both societies to change on the left hand side of this page an important question is being asked written in a blue box on a physical map of the subcontinent identify the areas in which tribal people may have lived who were tribal people contemporary historians and travelers give very scanty information about tribes a few exceptions apart tribal people did not keep written records but they preserved rich customs and oral traditions these were passed down to each new generation present day historians have started using such oral traditions to write tribal histories tribal people were found in almost every region of the subcontinent the area and influence of a tribe varied at different points of time some powerful tribes controlled large territories in punjab the kokhar tribe was very influential during the 13th and 14th centuries later the gakhars became more important their chief kamal khan gakhar was made a noble or mansabdar by emperor akbar 
in Multan and Sindh, the Langas and Arguns dominated extensive regions before they were subdued by the Mughals. Page 93 The Balochis were another large and powerful tribe in the northwest. They were divided into many smaller clans under different chiefs. In the western Himalaya lived the shepherd tribe of Gaddis. The distant northeastern part of the subcontinent, too, was entirely dominated by tribes, the Nagas, Ahoms, and many other. On the top of this page, a map is displayed. This is Map 1. It shows the location of some of the major Indian tribes. The prominent are Baluchi, Gakkhar, Kokhar, Janjua, Langa, Argun, Samas, Koli, Jatwas, Bheel, Bheel, Koli, Katkaris, Berad, Korga, Vetar, Marwar, Badagas, Koyas, Khond, Bagas, God, Cher, Oran, Munda, Santal, Coach, Khasi, Ahom, Kacheris, Naga. In many areas of the present day Bihar and Jharkhand, Chero chiefdoms had emerged by the 12th century. Raja Man Singh, Akbar's famous general, attacked and defeated the Cheros in 1591. A large amount of booty was taken from them, but they were not entirely subdued. Under Aurangzeb, Mughal forces captured many Chero fortresses and subjugated the tribe. The Mundas and Santals were among the other important tribes that lived in this region and also in Orissa and Bengal. On the right-hand side of this page, an important information is provided about a clan is a group of families or households claiming descent from a common ancestor. Tribal organization is often based on kinship or clan loyalties. Page 94 The Maharashtra highlands and Karnataka were home to Kolis, Berads and numerous others. Kolis also lived in many areas of Gujarat. Further south, there were large tribal populations of Koragas, Vetars, Marwars and many others. The large tribes of Bheels was spread across western and central India. By the late 16th century, many of them had become settled agriculturists and some even zamindars. Many Bheel clans, nevertheless, remained hunter-gatherers. The Gonds were found in great numbers across the present-day states of Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra and Andhra Pradesh. How nomads and mobile people lived. Nomadic pastoralists moved over long distances with their animals. They lived on milk and other pastoral products. They also exchanged wool, ghee, etc. with settled agriculturists for grain, cloth, utensils and other products. On the left-hand top of this page, a picture is shown. This is Figure 2. It shows Bheels hunting deer by night. On the left-hand bottom of this page, a picture is shown. This is Figure 3. It shows a chain of mobile traders connected India to the outside world. Here you see nuts being gathered and loaded on the backs of camels. Central Asian traders brought such goods to India and the Banjaras and other traders carried these to the local markets. Page number 95 They bought and sold these goods as they moved from one place to another, transporting them on their animals. The Banjaras were the most important trader nomads. Their caravan was called Tanda. 
Sultan Alauddin Khalji, Chapter 3, used the Banjaras to transport grain to the city markets. Emperor Jahangir wrote in his memoirs that the Banjaras carried grain on their bullocks from different areas and sold it in towns. They transported food grain for the Mughal army during military campaigns. With a large army, there could be one lakh bullocks carrying grain. Nomads and Itinerant Groups Nomads are wandering people. Many of them are pastoralists who roam from one pasture to another pasture with their flocks and herds. Similarly, itinerant groups such as craft persons, peddlers and entertainers travel from place to place practicing their different occupation. Both nomads and itinerant groups often visit the same places every year. The Banjaras Peter Mundy, an English trader who came to India during the early 17th century, has described the Banjaras. In the morning, we met a tanda of Banjaras with 14,000 oxen. They were all laden with grains such as wheat and rice. These Banjaras carry their household, wives and children along with them. One tanda consists of many families. Their way of life is similar to that of carriers who continuously travel from place to place. They own their oxen. They are sometimes hired by merchants, but most commonly they are themselves merchants. They buy grain where it is cheaply available and carry it to places where it is dearer. From there they again reload their oxen with anything that can be profitably sold in other places. In a tanda, there may be as many as six or seven hundred persons. They do not travel more than six or seven miles a day. That too, in the cool weather. After unloading their oxen, they turn them free to graze as there's enough land here and no one there to forbid them. Find out how grain is transported from villages to cities at present. In what ways is this similar to or different from the ways in which the Banjaras functioned? Page 96 Many pastoral tribes reared and sold animals, such as cattle and horses to the prosperous people. Different castes of petty peddlers also travelled from village to village. They made and sold wares such as ropes, reeds, straw matting and coarse sacks. Sometimes mendicants acted as wandering merchants. There were castes of entertainers who performed in different towns and villages for their livelihood. On the top of this page, a picture is shown. This is figure 4. It's a picture of a bronze crocodile, Kutia Kond, tribe Odisha, changing society, new castes and hierarchies. As the economy and the needs of society grew, people with new skills were required. Smaller castes or jatis emerged within Vern. For example, new castes appeared amongst the Brahmans. On the other hand, many tribes and social groups were taken into caste-based society and given the status of jatis. Specialized artisans, smiths, carpenters and masons were also recognized as separate jatis by the Brahmans. Jatis, rather than Vern, became the basis for organizing society. Deliberations on Jati a 12th century inscription from Uya Kundan Udayar in Tiruchirapalli Taluka in present day Tamil Nadu describes the deliberations in a sabha, chapter 2 of Brahmans. They deliberated on the status of a group known as Rathkars, literally chariot makers. They laid down their occupations, which were to include architecture, building coaches and chariots erecting gateways for temples with images in them, preparing wooden equipment used to perform sacrifices, building mandaps, making jewels for the king. Page number 97
Among the Kshatriyas, new Rajput clans became powerful by the 11th and 12th centuries. They belonged to different lineages such as Hoons, Chandelas, Chalukyas and others. Some of these too had been tribes earlier. Many of these clans came to be regarded as Rajputs. They gradually replaced the older rulers, especially in agricultural areas. Here, a developed society was emerging and rulers used their wealth to create powerful states. The rise of Rajput clans to the position of rulers set an example for the tribal people to follow. Gradually, with the support of the Brahmans, many tribes became part of the caste system. But only the leading tribal families could join the ruling class. A large majority joined the lower jatis of caste society. On the other hand, many dominant tribes of Punjab, Sindh and Northwest Frontier had adopted Islam quite early. They continued to reject the caste system. The unequal social order prescribed by Orthodox Hinduism was not widely accepted in these areas. The emergence of states is closely related to social change amongst tribal people. Two examples of this important part of our history are described below. On the right-hand side of this page, a picture is shown. This is figure 5. This is a picture of a gond woman. A closer look. The gonds. The gonds lived in a vast forested region called Gondwana, or country inhabited by gonds. They practiced shifting cultivation. The large Gond tribe was further divided into many smaller clans. Each clan had its own Raja or Rai. About the time that the power of Delhi Sultans was declining, a few large Gond kingdoms were beginning to dominate the smaller Gond chiefs. The Akbar Nama, a history of Akbar's reign, mentions the Gond kingdom of Gadh Katanga that had 70,000 villages. On the right-hand bottom of this page, an important information is given regarding shifting cultivation. Shifting cultivation. Trees and bushes in a forest area are first cut and burnt. The crop is sown in the ashes. When this land loses its fertility, another plot of land is cleared and planted in the same way. The administrative system of these kingdoms was becoming centralized. The kingdom was divided into girs. Page 98 Each gar was controlled by a particular gond clan. This was further divided into units of 84 villages called chaurasi. The chaurasi was subdivided into barhots, which were made up of 12 villages each. The emergence of large states changed the nature of Gond society. Their basically equal society gradually got divided into unequal social classes. Brahmans received land grants from the Gond Rajas and became more influential. The Gond chiefs now wished to be recognized as Rajputs. So, Amandas, the Gond Raja of Gadh Katanga, assumed the title of Sangram Shah. His son, Dalpat, married Princess Durgavati. The daughter of Sal Bahan, the Chandel Rajput Raja of Mahoba. On the left-hand top of this page, a map is being shown. This is map number 2. This is the map of Gondwana. It shows the cities of Bairogad, Chauragad, Goraha, Kolanga, Bandolgad. It also shows the rivers Tapti and Narmada. Dalpat, however, died early. Rani Durgavati was very capable. 
and started ruling on behalf of her five-year-old son, Bir Narayan. Under her, the kingdom became even more extensive. In 1565, the Mughal forces under Asaf Khan attacked Gadh Katanga. A strong resistance was put up by Rani Durgavati. She was defeated and preferred to die rather than surrender. Her son too died fighting soon after. On the right-hand bottom of this page, a picture is shown. This is figure 6. It shows a carved door, Gond tribe, Bastar area, Madhya Pradesh. Page 99. Gadh Katanga was a rich state. It earned much wealth by trapping and exporting wild elephants to other kingdoms. When the Mughals defeated the Gonds, they captured a huge booty of precious coins and elephants. They annexed part of the kingdom and granted the rest to Chandrashaha, an uncle of Bir Narayan. Despite the fall of Gadh Katanga, the Gond kingdoms survived for some time. However, they became much weaker and later struggled unsuccessfully against the stronger Bundelas and the Marathas. On the right-hand side of this page, a question is being asked, written in a blue box. Discuss why the Mughals were interested in the land of the Gonds. The Ahoms The Ahoms migrated to the Brahmaputra Valley from present-day Myanmar in the 13th century. They created a new state by suppressing the older political system of Bhuiyas or landlords. During the 16th century, they annexed the kingdoms of the Chutiyas, 1523, and of Koch Hajo in 1581 and subjugated many other tribes. The Ahoms built a large state and for this they used firearms as early as the 1530s. By the 1660s, they could even make high-quality gunpowder and cannons. However, the Ahoms faced many invasions from the southwest. In 1662, the Mughals under Mir Jumla attacked the Ahom kingdom. Despite their brave defense, the Ahoms were defeated. But direct Mughal control over the region could not last long. The Ahom state depended upon forced labor. Those forced to work for the state were called pikes. A census of the population was taken. Each village had to send a number of pikes by rotation. People from heavily populated areas were shifted to less populated places. On the right-hand bottom of this page, a map is shown. This is map number 3. It shows tribes of eastern India. The prominent tribes displayed are Coats, Ahoms, Miris, Daflas, Chutiyas, Garus, Khasi, Jayantiyas, Kacharis, Naga tribes. Page number 100. Almost all adult males served in the army during war. At other times, they were engaged in building dams, irrigation systems and other public works. The Ahoms also introduced new methods of rice cultivation. Ahom society was divided into clans or khels. There were very few castes of artisans. So artisans in the Ahom areas came from the adjoining kingdoms. A khel often controlled several villages. The peasant was given land by his village community. Even the king could not take it away without the community's consent. Originally, the Ahoms worshipped their own tribal gods. During the first half of the 17th century, however, the influence of Brahmans increased. Temples and Brahmans were granted land by the king. In the reign of Sib Singh, 1714-1744, Hinduism became the predominant religion. 
but the Ahom kings did not completely give up their traditional beliefs after adopting Hinduism. Ahom society was very sophisticated. Poets and scholars were given land grants. Theatre was encouraged. Important works of Sanskrit were translated into the local language. Historical works known as Buranjis were also written, first in the Ahom language and then in Assamese. On the left hand top of this page, a picture is shown. This is figure 7. It shows ear ornaments, Koboi Naga tribe of Manipur. On the left hand side of this page, a question is being asked, written in a blue box. Why do you think the Mughals tried to conquer the land of the Ahoms? Conclusion Considerable social change took place in the subcontinent during the period we have been examining. Vern-based society and tribal people constantly interacted with each other. This interaction caused both kinds of societies to adapt and change. There were many different tribes and they took up diverse livelihoods. Over a period of time, many of them merged with caste-based society. Others, however, rejected both the caste system and orthodox Hinduism. Some tribes established extensive states with well-organized systems of administration. They thus became politically powerful. This brought them into conflict with larger and more complex kingdoms and empires. Page 101 The Mongols Find Mongolia in your atlas. The best-known pastoral and hunter-gatherer tribe in history were the Mongols. They inhabited the grasslands of Central Asia and the forested areas further north. By 1206, Genghis Khan had united the Mongol and Turkish tribes into a powerful military force. At the time of his death, in 1227, he was the ruler of extensive territories. His successors created a vast empire. At different points of time, it included parts of Russia, Eastern Europe, and also China and much of West Asia. The Mongols had well-organized military and administrative systems. These were based on the support of different ethnic and religious groups. Imagine, you are a member of a nomadic community that shifts residence every three months. How could this change your life? Let's recall. 1. Match the following. Gar. Tanda, Laborer, Clan, Sib Singh, Durgavati, Khel, Chaurasi, Caravan, Gadh Katanga, A Home State, Pike. Page number 102. Fill in the blanks. A. The new castes emerging within Verns were called Fill in the blank. B. Fill in the blank were historical works written by the Ahoms. C. The fill-in-the-blank mentions that Gadh Katanga had 70,000 villages. D. As tribal states became bigger and stronger, they gave land grants to fill-in-the-blank and fill-in-the-blank. 3. State, whether true or false. A. Tribal societies had rich oral traditions. B. There were no tribal communities in the northwestern part of the subcontinent. C. The Chaurasi in Gond states contained several cities. D. The Bheels lived in the northeastern part of the subcontinent. 4. What kind of exchanges took place between nomadic pastoralists and settled agriculturists? Keywords Varn, Jati, Tanda, Gad, Chaurasi, Barhot, Bhunyas, Pike, Khel, Buranji, Census. Let's understand. 5. 
How was the administration of the Ahom state organized? 6. What changes took place in Verne based society? 7. How did tribal societies change after being organized into a state? Let's discuss. 8. Were the Banjaras important for the economy? 9. In what ways was the history of the Gonds different from that of the Ahoms? Were there any similarities? Let's do. 10. Plot the location of the tribes mentioned in this chapter on a map. For any two, discuss whether their mode of livelihood was suited to the geography and the environment of the area where they lived. 11. Find out about present-day government policies towards tribal populations and organize a discussion about these. 12. Find out more about present-day nomadic pastoral groups in the subcontinent. What animals do they keep? Which are the areas frequented by these groups? Narrator Babla Kochar You were just listening to this audio book. Technical Control Bati Langlingdo Technical Assistance Vikas Sangwan Assistance in Production Kusum Lata Direction and Production Vimalesh Chaudhary This audio book is brought to you by CIET and CERT New Delhi, India